Stephen King, what a great pleasure to meet you online. Likewise, thank you for, for having me doing this. Yeah. Uh, I've been watching a few of your videos and uh, I was hoping we could uh, yeah, well, get into the broader perspectives and looking ahead to getting future ready with regards to the Sidegeist movement. Um, sure. Yeah. Could you maybe just quickly initially describe your own uh, background with it? Sure. I mean, I'm a, a citizen like everyone else, a concerned citizen about the, the state of the world and, you know, the problems that are uh, getting more and more clear around us. And uh, I was originally introduced to the first two films a few years back by a friend of mine. And I was completely unaware of, of the whole movement uh, as it stands today at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but very quickly got very interested because there were just some shall we say, things that clicked for me when I watched especially uh, Zeitgeist Addendum, which is the second film and uh, the first film that really spawned the movement, so to speak. So uh, I, was, I got really interested very, very quickly after watching those films and uh, I signed up at the international site and uh, at that point there weren't that many people involved, um, but I just thought this was very interesting and uh, and so I found the Danish site, and at that point there was about 50 people signed up in Denmark, so it was very, very <laughs> in its infancy at that point. Right. Uh, and very quickly I got involved with some people, and we started exchanging ideas and, and what is this all about, and so it just grew from there. So before I knew it, I was the uh, coordinator for Denmark. <laughs> right. and. Uh, yeah, and I've, I'm just taking a break from that right now, so at the moment I'm not that involved mm. uh, because I've spent the past two years really literally thinking about little else and you have to be careful not to get too consumed <laughs> in stuff like this and just, you know, have perspective on things, so I'm taking a little break right now. Right, okay. Well, interesting to hear. I mean, I, and I agree in with regard, regards to, um, you know, looking ahead to the future. It, it has to be balanced with, with living in the present. Mm -hmm. uh, so that I mean, you can still relate to people who haven't yet had a chance to look at the, the things you have. Um, and I would think that goes to I mean, whichever path you, you look ahead through, I mean, it's, uh, you have to balance it. But, but so, so for, for two years running, you, you've been, would you, would you say, more or less the, the most active uh, proponent well of Zeitgeist here in Denmark? Yeah, I mean, it's a relatively small band of people still here in Denmark. I mean, there are some people in, in Aarhus and in Aalborg as well, but mm -hmm. they're really having a hard time getting organized because they're only like four or five people. Right. Um, and they still haven't got to that point where they really have someone that they could call a coordinator who has some takes on some responsibility. It's a little bit better in Copenhagen. We're about 15, 20 people here that meet regularly and on some level are active with one or another thing. Um, the, the problem with this whole movement is that it doesn't really have any structure. It's not like, you know, joining some, uh, some institution where you have clear-cut, uh, you know, positions and people are doing this and that. It's more of an information-based movement that really seeks to, uh, to facilitate the spreading of relevant information. So nobody's leading anything. Nobody's you know knocking you over the head if you don't do anything. So and people have seem to have a problem with taking on personal responsibility. I mean, if nobody tells them what to do, uh, they sort of drift uh, out the outskirts again. It's it's a strange ph phenomenon, really, and it's it, I think it tells a lot about our culture, really, that we we have a really hard time just being autonomous and and looking up information and sharing information on that level uh, without somebody tell us, telling us what to do. Uh, it's symptomatic, really, and it just goes to show that we, we, have, we have a long way to go in, in terms of culture um, because we're so used to these hierarchical structures that we've been living with for so long that even if people want to move away from them, uh, they have actually a hard time doing so, and, and we're all, I mean, if, if you look at your own life, I think we can all see uh, structures like that where we, we're more inclined to do something if somebody tells us to do it than just doing it by ourselves.